to tell you a little bit about the Americans, the story of the Americans. The African Americans who fought in the War of 1812 on the side of the British and settled in South Trinidad in 1816. The journey of the American was not an easy one. Before we were called Americans, we were Africans from West Africa and we were settled in North America on plantations. We struggled and then eventually we ran away from plantations. Plantations in Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, New Orleans and we freed ourselves. During the War of 1812, the African Americans who ran away from the plantations were offered their freedom by fighting for the, on the side of the British. It was not an easy journey, but for us it was really, really rewarding. I'm sure my four parents were not too concerned about whether the British won or the US won. They wanted their freedom. It was all about freedom. So they ran away from the plantations, they got on board, they got the red coats on, and they fought on the side of the British. Following the war in 1814, during 1814 and 1816, my people were sent to Bermuda and then to Canada and then to South Trinidad. The first batch of soldiers that came settled in first company known as Grant and the conditions there were not really, you know, what they had expected and they claimed, they called for New Grant. Hence the reason why the place is now called New Grant. <laughs> Octavia Roberts, better known as Leonis Roberts. Um, we are in Fort George Branch Road, where I have obtained from my grandfather, my father, passed on from generation, five acres of American property. My father was Daniel Elliott, my grandfather was the late Ebenezer Elliott, better known as Papa Niza. that we celebrate and we continue to celebrate as we celebrate our ancestors, our ancestors who fought and fought and fought for their freedom and come here to the Caribbean, here in the company villages, first company, second company, third company, fourth, fifth and sixth company. They're all in the midst here. As we celebrate our ancestors, I feel the powers of our ancestors. I feel like we have 401 ancestors in this room. You all feel them too? Yeah, put your hands together for all the ancestors in this room here. I feel the energy of my ancestors. You know why? Because it starts like this. This little group here, we celebrate. We celebrate this moment, we celebrate the effort, and we continue to celebrate. The African Americans settled in the company villages and called themselves Americans. Following that, we had to find ways to survive. It was not like leaving America and coming here and meeting hotels and guest houses just waiting to accommodate us. It was open forest. And I say thanks to the first people. The first people were the ones who journeyed from Muruga and came to the 
first company area there, that's Devil's Wood Yard, and helped us clear forests. However, we continue to work. We continue to build our own houses. We continue to cut roads. We continue to plant foods and feed our families. And the journey continued. We wanted our schools. We wanted our churches. We created churches. And that was one of our skills. A lot of Americans are preachers and teachers and healers and leaders in Trinidad and Tobago today. And not just in Trinidad and Tobago, a lot of them migrated. They went back to the UK and the US and Canada. But those who stayed on today, we have a long list of them, continue to contribute to the growth and development of Trinidad and Tobago. We look first, I want to look at religion. We came with the Baptist religion. And part of the Baptist religion, there you would find the Orisha, the Yoruba practice. Even though it was hidden, it was still there. Like one of our great leaders and preachers, Papa Nisa, he was one. He was an Orisha man as well. He was one who was instrumental in developing the Third Company Baptist Church. But however, the Orisha community around Trinidad and Tobago and the region, and even as far as Africa, proudly boast about Papa Nisa being the one who would visit shrines all over Trinidad and Tobago. But prior to that, he was a great healer. He was one who would heal the sick in the community. They called him the Obia man. But for me, Obia was very, very good for him. It was good Obia. He was the one who would work with midwives and help, you know, pregnant mothers and so on. He was the one who would heal you if you're not well, if you're mentally disturbed, he would heal you for free. <laughs> We were not born in Africa. Africa was born in I and I and I. So we all are Africans.